You're dying. You know you're dying. This has nothing to do with your body, not nothing to do with your flesh. But you cannot stop it. You cannot. It seems you do not have power over your body. It seems you do not have the power to control it anymore. This is for the married and single. Seven reasons why you are addicted. Addicted to fornication and adultery. Number one, the blame game. <laughs> you always play the blame game. You know, you, you have these situations, these circumstances that you think are beyond your control and every single time you want to blame somebody else outside yourself. You want to blame the situation, the circumstance that led to it. You're like, if I hadn't gone to this place, it wouldn't have happened. If I were at home, it wouldn't have happened. It was because my friends invited me to this ceremony. It was because there is always a because. It has always been because of something. This is why you have been absorbed so much into this. You don't even realize that you are addicted. You blame the devil too much. You, you just blame the devil too much. Every little thing, he was the devil. He was Satan. How could I? How could he? How could he? How could he? No, seriously. How could he? Oh, wow. Lack of self-control, your inability to be disciplined, your inability to control your body, yourself, your needs. Number two, your inability to have self-control and face your indiscipline. You misplace your priorities so much you've lost control. You say, we are all humans. We are all humans. So you have no control over your body you have no control over your actions and every single time every single time you fail you make a mistake and you blame your humanity you fake it that's number three you fake it you hide away you you want to hide the way you want to fake it you want to have that perfect picture you want to be that perfect relative you want to be that perfect person to your family to your friends you fake it so much you lie to yourself that you do not have a problem you look at yourself every day and you say everything is okay with me i do not have a problem but you know deep down that it, it is eating you up. Because after every single art, you go back and you cry and you weep and you clear your space and you just want to be alone. But you cannot embrace it. So you fake it. You come out and you're just there. Mm. Number four, your choices. Now, this is a very tricky one, quite tricky though, if I can say. Your choices. You, you made the choice one time. You wanted to try something new. You, you thought, oh, why don't I just try something new? Okay, why don't I just take her out, ask her out. You're having an issue with your spouse and you just want to ask her okay why don't just I just just for today who would even know your choices you made the wrong choices and it was capitalized upon an indiscipline set in the wrong choice or you choose um, to belong you just wanted to be a part of the people who ruled you can attest to the fact that yeah they, they, they belong, we, we are active in this thing. <laughs> and this, this takes us to the fifth point that I have, peer pressure. You know, with all this madness going on in, in the internet, and to think that the internet is one of the most crowded places on earth right now, with all this craze going on in the internet, you know, what's your body count? The whole thing, people sit together and they talk about 
their sexual encounters. And you're thinking, I don't have any. I don't have much. And when you say one or two, when you ask, what is your body count? <laughs> you can hear that. That's con. You feel like you do not belong here no more. Uh, why don't I just do these things so that I can belong? Peer pressure. So that you can belong. That's number five. So you can belong. To where exactly? You want to belong so bad you make choices that affect you. And you know because you make these choices like spontaneously, you do not know what the repercussions are going to be. You do not know what you're going to be seeing at the end of the rope. So it entangles you. It ties you together. It just becomes that. That thing that you can't let go of. No matter how much you try. I'm trying to find a way to put this one. That's number six. Lack of satisfaction. Insatiety. <laughs> or being insatiable. The state of being insatiable. You, you, you have expectations now of the women in your life. You think you're not being satisfied by the men, by your spouse, by your husband. Or it could be materialistic. You're no longer okay with how your life is. And if the only thing that you're going to do to get your family out of destitution is to give your body away, then why not just do it? And by the time you've started, you realize that you cannot stop. It becomes more and more difficult for you to stop. You can't stop. You try, you can't stop. Even when the money and the material things do not matter to you anymore, you still cannot stop. Even after you've pledged your allegiance to your spouse, you find out that you've become insatiable. But you still want to ignore the fact that you are addicted though. You still want to ignore the fact that you could be addicted. Number seven, because I want this to be quick. <clears throat> Number seven, <sighs> demonic influence. Yes, <laughs> I said it, <laughs> demonic influence. I know that at this point, a lot of you are, uh, you know, you're like, yeah, I got as much, that must be the reason. I must have been influenced by a demon somewhere. Do not forget that most times demons there exists, yes. Demons capitalize on things you do over and over again. For example, from the points list, uh, listed above, it could have been a choice you made. It could have been because of your friends. It could have been because you wanted to belong. And then when you start doing these things one, two times, then the demon capitalizes upon it. And that spirit becomes insatiable. It comes at you. It knows that this is a point where they have to get you and grab you and never let you go. Demonic influence. This is actually deeper than I can say. But at some points you realize that you just don't know why. I just don't know why. I said I was going to stop. I wanted to stop. I really wanted, but I do not just know why I cannot. I could not. That could be it. Another thing, most times it's not just as a result of very few times, say probably 3% out of 90, out of 100. It could, it, could be because, it could not be because of the choices you made. It might just be because of a particular demon. Maybe something invoked, something possessive, whatever the case may be, it could be that, it could be. But aside that, most times demons capitalize on the choices that we make and 
on the partners that we've had. You, know, you could have a partner who's had to deal with legions of demons and multiples, that when you have a fusion with them like that, there is an impartation. That is why most times I tell you that if, for you to have sex, for every single person you have sexual encounter with, there is a deposit in your spirit. And that is true. Exactly, extremely true. So in most cases, demons capitalize on this. So here we come. Now that we are done talking about the possible reasons why you are addicted to fornication or adultery, let's talk about the solutions, the proven solutions to help you get rid of that infectious disastrous disease eating out at your soul. Number one, okay, my first point would be realize that you are not helpless. You know, most times that ideology of humanity, it just keeps you going. You're saying, oh, we are helpless. I am helpless. I can't help the situation. I can't help it. You are not helpless. A man can tame an animal. Any type of animal is tameable. What about you? How much more you as a human being? Refuse that ideology that you are helpless because you are not. You are not helpless. You can do this. Yes, you can do this. Refuse that you are helpless and be determined for a change. That's it. You have to be determined for a change. You have to be consistent. You have to be determined. You have to make up your mind because a made up mind has done or solved half the problem. You have to decide on your own to say, I do not want this anymore. I want to change. If your desire is strong enough, then you can have whatsoever it is you want. Stay away from compromising situations and change your choices. Now, do you know what compromising situations could be? It could be that party. It could be the level. It could be anything ranging from staying, being alone with someone or making that phone call or sexting or whatever the case may be. Or even watching a movie, a certain type of movie, you know, that type that entices you to think about sex. Refuse compromising situations and change your choices. Make different choices. Make up your mind to say, I am not going to do this. Instead, I will do this. Change your choices. Find better things to fill in with the times you are alone. Find better things to think about. Find better things and more insightful things to do. Change your choices and refuse to be found in compromising situations. Do not go out to that place alone. Do not be with friends who encourage you to go ahead and do it. If it's possible for you and it has something to do with your circle, then change your circle of friends. Change the people that you go out with. Change the people that entice you. Or maybe just take a very huge break from all those things. If it's about your lifestyle, then you can as well change your lifestyle because there is nothing under the planet Earth that cannot be changed. You have to be determined enough to change it. So change your lifestyle, be determined, change your choices and refuse to be found in compromising situations. Stand your ground. Yes. Should in case you found yourself in a situation like that, do not forget that you have met a determination and a commitment to quit something. So you stand your ground. Learn to say no. Learn to just say no. Stand your ground. Refuse to allow your body control you. Most times, I know you're going to say, most times my body has a mind of its own. It doesn't really. You just let your body have a mind of its own. That is why it seems your body controls your actions. 
You are in charge. Control your mind. Stand your ground and do not be pressured. It is one day at a time. If you say no today, tomorrow you say no. Next tomorrow you say no. Or you could just say no every hour that it comes up. You say no now and later in the day you say no. And before you know it, you've gone a whole day of saying no and a whole week of saying no. And before you remember what's happening, you have been able to tame your flesh and to control your choices. Be accountable. Yeah. Be accountable. Learn how to be accountable to the people around you. Be accountable to the people who genuinely care for you. To those people who you can talk to. Be accountable to them. Be accountable to those you've hurt. Be accountable to your partners probably. If you're married, be accountable to your partner. Now, this is why it is especially important to be married to somebody who understands you, who you can talk to. And instead of picking an offense, they try to help you. Because when you work together to do this, it's so much better. Be accountable to your spouse. Be accountable to your spiritual leader. If the case may be be accountable to your parents if it gets to the point where you have to tell them and if they are you know most parents are judgmental if you have to be accountable to the people around you and especially be accountable to yourself yes be accountable to yourself because the moment you become accountable to yourself you have had a heavy body lifted off your shoulders and your part to clearing that status is cut out by half. So be accountable to yourself because you should. You deserve to be accountable to yourself. You deserve to embrace your food and move forward to solving the problems. Woo! Pray. Pray, 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 pray. I am not being religious about this point, but it is very important that you pray, especially if this has something to do with a demonic influence. You should pray. Because when it comes to an influence beyond human control, it will only take a power beyond human control to solve it. You should pray. You pray. You bring this matter, you table it. You address the demon responsible for that problem. You pray. You put in the work and you pray. Yes. You put in the work by being conscious of your choices, by staying away from controversial situations, by staying away from things that are going to lead you back to doing these things you put your own part, play your own part, then you pray. Yes. You carry this matter spiritually and you table it to a power beyond you. And in this case, I mean God because he has all powers. And if you are an atheist, I am sorry that I do not agree with your there is no God issue. But we will talk about that because there is a God and he exists. And he is stronger than anybody on any force you can think of. If there is a physical, there is a spiritual. If there is a good, there is a bad. If there are demons, then there is a God. That's it. So you pray. You pray. You pray. You pray. Yes. Above all, control your mind. Learn how to control your mind. Avoid wandering minds. Stop stop imagining situations when you see people. Stop imagining. When you find yourself imagining, having imaginations, sexual imaginations, when you see people you've either been with entangled with sexually or people you think you want to get entangled with. When you keep having those imaginations, stop right there. Reframe your mind. Take breathing exercises if you have to. Stop. Fill your mind with a different thought and before you know it, you will be on your way to victory. Walk by the Spirit. Hmm. 
He said, yeah, I said, yes. Walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the works of the flesh. Because this is the work of the flesh. There, most definitely, <coughs> would be the influence of demons, demonic powers. But when you walk by the Spirit, you will not be able to fulfill the works of the flesh. And if you're not born again, you should accept Jesus into your life and let him take control. That way the Holy Spirit helps you consistently to live right, to stay away, to say no, because he helps you in your weakness. He is there to help you in your weakness. No other person, no individual can help you in your weakness. Most times the people you might even talk to are not going to help you really. They will just talk but they can't help you. But the Holy Spirit is there and he can help you in your moments of weakness. That's where he is, strong and mighty. So, right now, for now, I have come to the end of this particular session. The beautiful thing is that you are on your way to have yourself emancipated from destruction. The destruction that comes for your soul. The destructions that keeps you low. The destruction that makes you feel helpless and hopeless and no matter how strong and influential you become he still just has that ability to make you feel less of who you really are so embrace that truth walk by faith walk by the spirit and let god be the champion of your life and do not forget to avoid compromising situations stay away from the people or conversations that lead you to do these things or to think these thoughts and before you know it, with God by your side and by his spirit willing, you will come out victoriously. You will have a testimony to share. You would say, I was like this, but now I'm not. Until my next video, where I will be bringing you insights into certain things that people face and see on a daily lifestyle, on their daily life insights and how bringing you how solutions possible solutions to problems people face in life until my next video when i will see you again i say have a beautiful time and do not forget that you you always stand tall all right bye